to me, the, to me, the Street Riders are about the best South Australian band. <laughs> The best band? He, oh, my favourite band is Streamliners. Yeah. By far. Still. Yeah. Always. I've, I've heard them I don't know how many times now. Yeah, yeah. And I can sit here and have a night with them on stage and go home and put their CD on. Yeah. I just think they're brilliant. They're a tricky interview though, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, but probably because they don't talk themselves up. Probably because they are, they are quite modest and they just are. I mean, I, I remember being at a gig. They played as part of the Fringe Festival back yeah. in the early 90s when he, I happened to be with um, a guy called Danny Freeman, who, play, uh, who plays with Bob Dylan's band. And I said, oh, what do you think of the Streamliners? And he said, oh, they're world class. He said, you know, they're better than any bar band in the US, you know. don't have a sound. Mm. They don't have an intrinsic sound that is theirs, mm. you know? Well, mm. the streamliners have a sound. across a harmonica playing friend at the time, a guy called Roger Cufoni, and uh, we thought, well, let's put a blues band together, because, you know, what else do you do with a harmonica playing? And he was into it too, he was into copying James Cotton and all those guys. Hey, they were really good. It was their first gig, they were playing at a friend's um, 21st birthday or something, and they were set up in a chicken shed, and they were just... I was told, oh, it's just a, a band, they haven't played gigs yet, this is their first time in public, you know. Mm. Come and have a listen, you know, and I went to the, I knew the people and went to the show. And uh, it wasn't quite what I expected, they were about five or six times better than I, I oh, they were, I've never heard a band that hasn't done a gig yet sound that good, you know, and they hadn't done a gig yet, they sounded that good. Um, uh, you would have seen them, what, way back in 89? Yeah, 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 when they used to play Club Foot. Oh yeah? Yeah. And what were they like then? Uh, oh, they were young. Yeah. Raw? Uh, no, they were pretty. They were pretty smooth back then. Really? Yeah, they weren't really. All, they've never been all that raw. <laughs>
basically my my thing. That's what I'm doing behind the scenes, so to speak. Just uh, working on new material and keep the ball rolling. You have to, otherwise, because if you don't play as much, you've got to do something to counter that and keep everybody interested. Otherwise, everyone tends to just drop it and drift. So if you're not gigging live, you've got to do something to to keep everyone interested. So this is why we're recording. Should they tour? They probably should, but you know, they've got their own... I mean, it's hard for a musician. You've got to, you know, it's, it's us. That's why bands don't tour, that yeah. probably should, is because there's, there's a big commitment involved in yeah. putting your, you know, your money into going out on tour with a band yeah. when, and getting time off from your day job, because you're not going to pay the bills being a musician yeah. in Adelaide. What about being an international touring artist? Well, yeah, but that's, you know, that doesn't happen for everyone. Have they got it in them? Uh, possibly, but then I'm not even sure whether they want to do that. Um, do you know what I mean? They might be quite happy playing with seven four workers every two or three weeks and, you know. What are your ambitions outside of that? Uh, I mean, look, you can always uh, say that it'd be nice to take it elsewhere, and uh, we should. I mean, but the, the main thing that's kept us back well, with, with, with the streamline is, if anything, is the, the fact that everyone's been busy doing other things. Everyone's had day jobs and families to take care of. And, and four or five other bands that you Yeah, it's always been difficult to sort of line the guys up for a week or two to do anything. And that's always sort of kept us back. Steve on the drums, please. He's working hard tonight, isn't he? Yeah. You know, Steve is the percussionist for the Adelaide Symphony Orchestra, so he's, he's got particular, you know, um, responsibilities there. So it can be hard just to just tour. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I think a lot, I think they probably gave, gave up many yeah. years ago. About um, you know, maybe when they were younger, it mm. might have been an option, but probably not so much now yeah. that they're older. With you know. Yeah. Obligations. Yeah, but their sound would make it though. Ah, oh, the sound definitely would, yeah. <laughs> I'm certain most most of the guys in the band do. Uh, it, it, like I said, just the logistics of actually doing it is uh, a little more difficult than what it seems like on the outside. you 
very first uh, recording we did came out back in, uh, I think it was 94. Um, over the course of four or five CDs, it's changed quite a bit. Because we've had lineup changes along the way. You know, we started off, we had... Sav, Sav in there. Sav was with us for a long, long time, yeah. Sav was with us from the onset. And, uh, you know, during the harmonica player stage, our repertoire was different. And then when the harmonica player left, we got the horn section in, saxophones and things like that. And that was a different sound again. It was my uptown blues, BB King, Kate Mouth Brown, that sort of thing. And uh, then the horn section disappeared and we were down to a guitar based drums thing for a while and that changed the sound again. So it's always evolving, you know. And, and the surprising thing is, a lot of the time we don't have any control over it. It just sort of morphs itself. You sort of just just get swept along with it, you know. There's no leader in the band, and in fact, Nick, from a really young age, was a really shy guy. You know? He never wanted to have that position. Yeah. But Nick, it's sort of like a reluctant sort of hero, he plays that role. Uh, yeah, I think he probably does it. Um, what's the word? Uh, out of necessity because he's a talented singer, talented guitar player and if you can do both things you're destined to be a front man and uh, if you don't necessarily have that personality that puts it out there you've, you've got to develop something that you know makes it work for you. Basically uh, my songwriting that, that sort of drives the thing along and um, although I do, do leave things unfinished to get the guys to add their own ideas to them Myself, I, I'm quite busy. Um, you know, usually you hands from about three to five gigs a week. Yeah, so it's quite good. It's pretty busy. Yeah, it's pretty busy. By today's standards, in the old days it was it was nothing. I mean, in the old days, like I'm talking like the '70s when musicians were in Adelaide, they'd be playing six nights a week, constantly. It was a different time. Different. But these days, if you can be playing, you know, three five nights a week, you're doing pretty good. Would you consider yourself a professional musician? Now I do, yeah. Whereas uh, about three years ago I was, I was working in the electronics field for a long, long time. That's, that's what I've been trained for. Uh, I was trained as a technician, electronics engineer, and uh, I was working in that field for a long, long time. And uh, music was always a second thing. It was always a side job, it was a hobby, so to speak. And, uh, Things came to a head about three years ago in my personal life, and I thought, well, let's try something thing, different. Yeah, it's fun I do it now, never And I'm glad I did, yeah. It's been good. Certainly over the last two years, the Streamliners have, uh, for me, they've really just gone to a different level, you know, and sort of down to uh, the commitment to their craft now that they're um, doing it full time. It's a lot more direct, they're, they're just cutting to the chase, even within that. Which is what all the great bands, even when they have all these colours and uh, textures and whatever, even, even when they're playing a lot of notes, they're very direct. You know, Led Zeppelin, the bands like that are still direct even when it's, you know, it's quite uh, our type signature or, or whatever. You know, to me the Streamliners are about the best South Australian band, so it's Doing a festival in South Australia with Blues and Roots, it's a no-brainer. You know, they have to be on the bill. Personally, yeah, it's, it's high time I sort of stretched out and travelled a bit more. 